Hello, I'm Caitlin. Welcome to the first weekly episode of MathCast, brought to you by ZoeBot.com. In this week's episode, we'll take a brief look at factors and prime numbers. They're really easy to understand, and you won't believe how useful and common they are outside of school. Let's get started. A factor is just a number that evenly divides into another number. For example, 2 times 6 equals 12. The numbers 2 and 6 are factors of 12. In this example, 12 is also called a product. Remember, a product is the result of a multiplication problem. Let's look at the number 12. To factor the number 12, we take it apart to find its factors. So we ask, what numbers multiplied by other numbers equal the number 12? Another way to think about this is how can 12 be evenly divided? We see that 12 divided by 12 is 1, 12 divided by 6 equals 2, and 12 divided by 3 is 4. The numbers 12, 6, 3, 4, 2, and 1 are factors of 12. There are two types of factors, composite numbers and prime numbers. A composite number is a number that has two or more factors. For example, our product 12 has two composite numbers, 6 and 4. A composite number can be further divided evenly. For example, 6 can be divided by 2 and 3, and the number 4 can be divided by 2. A prime number is special. It's a number which only has two factors, the number 1 and the number itself. For example, 3 is a prime number because only the numbers 1 and 3 evenly divide into 3. So 3 divided by 1 is 3, and 3 divided by 3 is 1. So what is factoring useful for? Say that you're throwing a party for 7 of your closest friends. Your mom has asked you to plan your party. It's up to you to figure out how many party favors to buy and how much food to order. You know that you'll need a party bag for each of your seven friends. Inside the bag, you'll add toys or candy. How many pizza pies will you need? This is where factoring comes in. Come on, let's plan a party. This party is for girls. Sorry, boys. In each party bag, we'll add some makeup instead of candy. In the mall, you can buy a pack of lipstick. Each pack comes with three lipsticks. We have seven girls attending the party, and each pack of lipsticks has three sticks. So how many packs will we need for our party bags? Well, if we buy two packs, we get six sticks. That's one less than we need. We need seven. So if we buy three packs, we have three sticks times three packs equals nine sticks in total. Now that's two more than we need, but that's okay. Because we purchased three packs for a total of nine lipsticks, we'll use nine as our product. If we factor nine, we get three times three and nine times one. Each girl will get one lipstick in her bag. Factoring is useful, isn't it? For food, we're ordering pizza. Tony's Pizzeria has a large pie that's cut into 16 slices. Okay, 16 slices. Let's factor 16. One times 16 means that one person could eat the whole pie of 16 slices. No, I don't think so. 4 times 4 means that 4 people could each have 4 slices. 2 times 8 means that 2 people could each have 8 slices. Or, 8 people could each have 2 slices. That's more like it. Maybe we should order a large salad as well. Before we wrap up, let's talk about prime numbers. You remember? Numbers which are only divisible by itself and the number 1? Why are they useful? It turns out that really large prime numbers are a major pain to find. Really fast computers have to search for those numbers. The largest known prime number, as of last month, is a number with 9 million places or digits. It's really hard to imagine a number that is so very big. Computers use really large numbers to code messages so that they're safe. For example, banks use them to protect the information in your own bank account. Why? Because using a prime number to create a secret code makes it really hard to guess, even if you used a fast computer. 
That's it for this week's episode. If you have any questions, email me at mathcast at zoebot.com and visit zoebot.com for lots more.